brave adventurers, you are explorers in this wide world. You have explored the edges of the map and all things in between. Together, you've been you've been traveling. You've been on several adventures throughout uh, your careers. Some of them all together at once. Some of them just as do it. But you're all seasoned um, in the sense of traveling and exploring the world. After you know, you've kind of left some of the more mundane parts of your life behind, or in between adventures, you fall back to that, and then you kind of head off on your grand adventures. One of which is after your previous adventure of kind of kind of uh, what I'm trying to say is retrieving or recapturing the map of Purdue, one of the only recorded like records of the of the island this off the uh, off the coast, um, off the edges of the map from a fellow adventurer, uh, a common uh, kind of associate, Jack Carnahan. Uh, he's kind of gone back and forth, another person that you know in the in the community, but he, you uh, you relieved him of that of that map in your previous adventure, and you've decided to go off to Purdue in search of glory, treasure, and all sorts of things on this lost island. But additionally, you have begun gathering uh, in at dock, and you've chartered the SS Anglehorn, a uh, a very well known ship in the community. It is a kind of a uh, very uh, the ship and Captain Reichman, who who's at the charge or kind of leads out on this ship, is well known in the community to just support in general. Like many adventurers, many people who are out exploring the world, contact Englehorn. He has connections pretty much um, everywhere, or at Reichman everywhere, and then travel along the Englehorn. So it's kind of a infamous infamous ship. But you've managed to charter it for this voyage. And so you arrive on the dock on the day of departure, and we're just going to start off, and uh, we won't roll for initiative, but let me just ask you guys, who arrives first when it comes to uh, showing up at the dock ready to go? I think Lou would be early, but maybe um, take a peek from a nearby building window or something to see how things are going before boarding. Okay. Why don't you give me um, a wisdom roll as you kind of explore? Okay. So, um, that would be 20 plus, would be um, 18 plus 2 is a dirty 20. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very nice way to get this started. Yes, from from your vantage point in the crowd and just kind of at the higher higher point, you just see the the SS Anglehorn being uh, loaded um, and prepared. You see that there is a figure, a younger figure, Jack LeBlanc, who you know is the first mate of the Anglehorn, leading out and kind of directing the other sailors on board. One thing you do notice though is that in addition to just the regular supplies, food, crates, and all that, as you also see some other things being loaded in and kind of uh, loaded down below into the cargo into the cargo hold. Some stuff that's more uh, tightly boxed in crates. Um, kind of unmarked. Ooh, unmarked crates. Yes. Okay, uh, I take some pictures of everything if there's room to do so. Absolutely. Okay, we'll say that when you take pictures of things for, for now, like if there's ever any questions or if we're trying to investigate more, you might be able to get some easy rolls or some bonuses and yeah. information that you're trying to recall. Sounds cool. Maybe maybe Thank even you. blackmail. Mm. Charisma <laughs> bonuses for photography. Oh man, I like it. Well, she she is an investigative reporter from Pig's Eye, Minnesota. And um yeah, she's yeah. she's been involved in some stuff. <laughs> Excellent, love it. So who'd be next to arrive? If not, we can roll for it. No, no pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, Robert will arrive next. Hey, so how do you approach the SS Anglehorn, Robert? Uh, with my arms full of all sorts of gizmos and gadgetry for exploration. I've got my survey equipment. I've got um, 
basically boxes and boxes of things uh, to go exploring with. Excellent. Yeah, as as you kind of pull up, you probably have some uh, some some assistants who are kind of carrying some of the some of the larger equipment that you have. You call it, you know, call out, and Jack called out to you. He's like, just just put the stuff over there. We can we can load it up. Anything uh, anything in particular that's delicate that we need to be aware of. Otherwise, uh, can't be can't be held accountable for anything broken. Uh, it's all labeled. It's all labeled. Uh, the, the the stuff that needs to be. Uh, yes, handled with care. I've already labeled that. Um, All right. I'm still. I'm accustomed to this. <laughs> well met. Well met. Yeah. And then yeah, he calls out to the, the sailors, and they kind of start pulling in your stuff as well. Perfect. Bob or uh, Darrow, who uh, who arrives next? I think I think Darrow would be the last to arrive to the to the boat. So I'm gonna pass to Bob. Yeah. All right. So um, as uh, Robert Woodward arrives, um, Bob kind of like leans forward from the the building where he's been standing the whole time, kind of watching the dock happen. Um, he's he's been here for quite a while already, just kind of taking things in, um, blending in with with what happens on the dock, um, mm-hmm. just kind of kind of watching the area. Okay. All right. Give me a uh, give me a wisdom roll. Oh, that'll be seventeen. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. You you see um just again you see some of the unmarked crates you get as you're kind of watching. You see that there's this uh, voyage is you can see well you're seeing that the the stuff that's coming in is set up for perhaps not only your voyage but there's an excess of supplies. Almost as if there's almost double of what of everything on board. Okay, that is good to know. I think that's definitely something Bob would take notice of. Uh-huh. Perfect. Okay, and last but not least, we have Darrow going up the rear, coming at last. So Darrow Vickers kind of shuffles up, and uh, it's a he's a small man. I'm thinking just a little bit above five feet tall so he's not going to be an imposing figure at all and uh being a medic in the war um he is carrying those like large suspender um kind of harnesses that carry like medicine uh carry his medic kit and such Mm -hmm. and so those things are kind of like as he's kind of like a little bit out of breath and kind of jostling his way like through the crowd He's kind of huffing and puffing, and those those medic bags are kind of jostling up. And uh, and he comes, and he's got um, he's wearing a uh, a combat helmet on his head, uh, but it's been like redecorated with some you know different kind of uh, hand painted art, um, mm-hmm. some different notes and such. It's kind of like you know he's like redeeming this piece from the war. And there's actually like a bullet hole in in the helmet. Um, so it's actually not going to be helpful in defense at all. The thing's already lost its integrity, but he leaves it. He loses it kind of like a good luck charm. And it's like it saved him once. So who knows if it'll it'll help him again? And so he kind of like jostles up and kind of tips the helmet back and kind of like you know his head kind of raises and looks up toward Bob Parker. And he's like, "Oh, hey, you going on this? You going on this boat here? The uh, the Englehorn? That's that's me. It's good to make your acquaintance. And uh, Bob kind of holds out a holds out a hand to shake hands and introduce himself. Yeah, there is a bit of like a, a painfully cheery disposition, you know. And he's like shakes his hand. He's like, I just, I'm so excited to see new sights. I, I just, I can't wait to get my book and uh, take, yeah, try all these things. And you know, he's just kind of bumbling and shuffling around. He's like, well, you know, if you ever need of any assistance, I've, uh, I've, I've earned. Uh, a good bit of knowledge and how to how to help out. So he kind of like pats his his medic kit and stuff, and he's like, "Good to meet you. Uh, good to meet you. I'm I'm Darrow, and uh, and I'll be here on this here boat." <laughs> Perfect. And lo- I love the description of the hat. I definitely want you to take take that as an item, and you can just take, give, <laughs> give yourself either a plus one to your luck or plus one to your charisma, your choice. Oh, nice. <laughs> I think a hat is wonderful. <laughs> Can Lou came co- um, accompany him up the the game plank or the not the game, 
up the walk and uh, say, well, can I can I help you carry any of that? Oh, no, I've been I've been carrying this in the in the in the muck in the mire. I think I can I can carry on this year with planks. Are you in need of any assistance? And he kind of he's genuinely asking. Yeah, I'm I'm set. She has her single travel bag uh, strapped crossways across her. Okay, well, excellent. Uh, it seems like we're all we're all set. And of course, if you're in any need of assistance, I'll be uh, I'll be happy to help. And he kind of tips his tips his helmet a little bit and makes his way into the boat. Perfect. Awesome. Well, as you guys all begin to en- enter onto the boat, Jack blows the whistle and calls on all all aboard. We're shoving off in a few minutes. The captain um, captain wants to leave with the tide, and so. Um, Pulling, pulling the board, pulling, you know, lock everything down, and we'll be, we'll be off to the great, you know, to the great ocean. You know, get your sea legs on, on as quick as you can. We don't wait, we don't wait for anybody. Okay, so as you, uh, you all kind of get settled in, and you stand on the on the deck, and kind of watch as the angle horn kind of pulls out from the dock. Everyone casts off and. Eventually, you guys are moving out, and shortly, you're out onto the open sea. So, from here, you've got some options of how you guys want to approach it. It's, it's going to be, you know, on the grand scheme of things, a few weeks, but in the in the game, we're going to just be here for, for a few rounds or so. But essentially, you have the angle horn, which is um, just a small tramp steamer, uh, which is... Um, just kind of, you can tell it's it's worn and aged. It's it's seen a lot of things. It's still sturdy and whatever. You can see it's been repaired constantly. Um, but overall, you can kind of see that Jack is leading out on the deck. He seems to be in most command. You've got in the back some different places, but you can either stay out here on the dock and talk to some of the sailors or Jack Jack LeBlanc. You can go into your quarters, kind of in the interior of the ship. Um, you might be able to find your place to place to sleep, some more of the crew, or you can head up to the uh, to the wheelhouse, the bridge, where uh, Captain Reichman is steering the ship. So uh, we had Lou come in first, followed by uh, Robert, and then by Bob, and then by Darrow. So we'll stick that for the initiative order, um, and then I'm just going to uh, roll. Let's say, well, one is not. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, how about two? We'll do two. Yeah, how about two? <laughs> we'll roll two. Uh, we'll do one plus one, one plus one, uh, d4 plus one, and then uh, we'll see what happens. But for now, uh, Lou, how, where, where do you want to go on the angle horn? Okay. Um, I would probably uh, casually walk, you know, bow to stern if, if appropriate, and... Um, uh, familiarize myself with the ship and the people um, sure. without being without appearing too nosy or anything um, just like hey I'm along here like everybody else is um, is there any reason why we would talk to the captain or first mate or just exchange pleasantries with um, with the crew um so you can find out more more information. That's kind of maybe you know if you want to find out history about the Anglehorn, if you want to find out kind of what the plan is, anything like that. You can if you talk to Jack, you can kind of get a feel for um, kind of the connection of like the crew. He leads out on the crew a lot. Um, the only thing that he tells you as you're wandering about is that you are at liberty to move about the ship at will, except for the lower uh, the lower lower cargo hold that has been requested to be met and kept private. Yep. And that was my other question for what I observe, not um, what I ask Jack. Um, is the cargo hold um, at at the back or at the front? So the, the cargo hold, we're going to say, is at the back here. And okay. you, can, you, you can see that there's kind of doors leading, uh, leading down. Um, they're not necessarily locked. Like there's not a uh, like a padlock or anything. It's just the request is to stay out. 
Okay, so um, that's what I'm doing, and um, unless Jack has some conversation to share, uh, that will be my turn. Just very glad to have you aboard. It's always fun to, um, who knows, you may have even been on the Anglehorn before on, before on other adventures, but yes, he's, he's glad, he's happy to ha have another adventure under his belt. It's always an exciting day, the first day of an adventure. And I certainly would have found in any archives I had access to um, any drawings or um, dry dock receipts um, yeah. that I could dig up about about the ship. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Robert, what would you like so to do? Robert will be in the galley, looking over the map, uh, making notes on. Um, what was already previously explored on the map, um, trying to notate like ease, uh, courses to set and uh, ease of travel, um, just so you can get an idea of the lay of the land just from what notes were taken um, from whatever previous voyage happened here. For sure. So in the galley, you can see that it's kind of close quarters. The ship itself is not the largest, um, but it has space for study. It's also kind of shared with some of the, the cooking um, portion. You you see that um, Andy Kepler, the, the ship's cook, is whiling away at, at preparing some meal uh, for the crew and for yourselves. And so you've got opportunities to kind of chat there. But overall, as you look um, for it, give me a uh, give me either an intelligence or wisdom roll as you study out the map. So you go intelligence. Oh, well. Good to know my luck holds true, even in BTT. <laughs> Natural one plus uh, my two is a total of three, unfortunately. Well, the so one I'm, thing you do... Sorry, go for it. Uh, so I don't think I'm making very much headway, and I'm just stressing oh. out about uh, trying to chart the right course for us. Yeah. And so, it's nothing else. real quick, King. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is uh, I've, I've got... Um, a harmonica that, uh, that is mechanically like boosting and analyze roll the basic roll uh -huh. and so um just to help negate maybe it'd be a little bit better than a uh natural one um i was gonna say darrow would be like introduced himself to robert and what was kind of there like playing like a, a soothing song so maybe with the frustration of um the frustration of looking over the map or what could have been maybe uh Maybe Darrow's harmonica. I'll just toss a D four on top of on top of that. So a total of four. Still, still not a pass in the target, but no. um, helps it be just a little bit less frustrating. Maybe avoid disaster that. with that map. For sure. Yeah. I'm like nothing. Nothing happens to the map. I think everything's there. I think the one thing that we'll say narratively with that one is that as you're studying it, part of the frustration is that it appears that Jack Arnahan has purposely altered a few things. Like you can you can almost see like fresh ink, fresher ink compared to other things, but it's set in so you can't quite see what the true details underneath were. Almost as if Jack had taken note of it and then altered it so that no one else. So the, the, the trustworthiness is even more in question thanks to Jack's selfishness. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's going to bring us to Bob. So I think I think Bob is hanging out on the on the deck, um, kind of enjoying this little bit of a little bit of a break from having to work and you know, kind of always be on like on board with the action and all that. Um, so I think he's just hanging out, kind of keeping an eye on what the crew is doing, trying to see if he can pick up on anything. Mm -hmm. And um, he's kind of anxious to um, lend a hand with any of the crew's activities if he can. Sure. Um, and trying to figure out if there's anything more to be to be gleaned about those, those supplies. Yeah, go for it. Give me either a charisma or a wisdom. Your choice. All right. I'll be a seven. Okay. So not quite um, for more information, but I will say this, as you 
used to work to not just be a passenger but an actual helping hand um i will say that the the crew of the anglehorn does take a liking to you and so in future instances um we'll say that you will have easier af- effects or kind of influence on on the crew kind of right. they start they start to adopt you as one of the one of their own sweet especially don't you have the sailor you have the sailor Yep, he's a sailor, so he's very he's very comfortable on this yeah. on this boat. And the sailors are are especially comfortable around you as well. All right, sweet. Got him right where I want him. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hey, and then Darrow being uh, helping out with uh, Robert. What would you what would you like to do? So as I. As I think about it, I think what Darrow yeah. wants to do is uh, he's he's a wily guy. He's always got a smile on, but he's he's you know he, he's clever as well. He's not he's not naive, and he sees that there's these secrets to their being hidden on the Inglehorn, and uh, he's curious about it. So uh, during this time it takes, he kind of like you know he talks with he talks talks with Bob, and he sees that you know the crew's taking a liking to him and stuff. So he proposes a plan. And he says, he, he, he pitches to all the crew and he says, look, like, basically what I want to do is I would really love to capture, you know, a picture of this crew, but I don't have a, a you know, he doesn't mention the camera that Lou has. He's like, I, I would draw it. And so I need all of you to kind of like come to the, you know, where the lighting's really helpful for me to draw. He's got a sketchbook and pens and, um, and he's going to, you know, invite all of the you know, non-essential crew to basically join him. And this will give a chunk of time where uh, trusted people such as uh, Bob Harker could perhaps take a peek at things without, you know, being impeded by the crew. So this is my narrative description of me using the arts uh, to make all non-combat roles easy. So as you know as the chef and the crewmen are kind of all preoccupied and like happy and you know it's like hey yeah you know get this artist to draw the draw a picture of the crew then for d4 rounds all non-combat roles are gonna be easy and so this next round exploring the ship at least um will drop that target even more so hopefully our explorer crew can um have an easier nice. time at whatever tasks they tasks they settle into Awesome. Sweet. Good. And I'm glad you mentioned so that Bob could be free because Lou has been wanting to tell him about the the secret cargo. <laughs> yeah. So I think that Darrow would gather all of them at the at the front of the ship, like all the crew, and he would he would just pretend to mess up and have to erase and, and redraw and he's like, No no no, I think it'd be better if you were there. So he like scribbles and draws. But he's like a he's a likable guy, so he's he's uh you know, he's got them all laughing and kind of jostling and stuff. And he's just, he's, you know, he knows he's giving the, his, his compatriots uh, a moment to kind of sniff around without the crew uh, blocking their path. So all that's happening up front this next round. Perfect. Hey, we'll take a hero coin for that, for that yes. endeavor. Um, and this is after, this is after a couple, couple days because we're going to roll the timer down and we're going to say a few days have gone by, maybe even a week has passed on this ship. So you had, you've had plenty of time to gain a repertoire with these sailors. Like you don't just come out of the gate asking for this portrait. It's, it's after a week sitting on the boat, like, Hey, I've got nothing else to do. Like we're, we're out at sea, the far off reaches. There isn't another island around for a while. Um, but yeah. Well done. Okay, so that's going to bring us to uh, to uh, to Lou. Okay, um, I uh, find Bob Harker and uh, let him know uh, there is a reason we can't go below, other than not being crew. There are some uh, unmarked crates that were handled particularly carefully put down below um and uh what have you seen um bob when you when you approach him he kind of he kind of nods and um 
he indicates that he also saw the unmarked crates and he's been he's been wondering about it so it's kind of like he's he's glad to know that he's not the only one thinking about the the extra supplies so it's just like yeah it seems like they had uh, two, two times as much supply as we needed and that seems a little bit more than just you know being careful and over preparing so it's definitely best yeah. to keep our eyes open and it's extra weight on the ship which means you can't take other cargo exactly it definitely seems like something's something's fishy so can we take a take a look back there since the crew tends to be over up at the bow sure um, yeah, whoever wants to to attempt it, or yeah, whoever wants to attempt it, both, or I guess anyone who wants to attempt it can make a stealth check with their decks. Okay, we'll so easy, my easy dex is my dex is plus one, and my um, investigation is plus two. Okay, well, um, I think you, uh, do we'll, stealth. Yeah, with stealth, I think you can use your investigation bonus on that one. Okay. Because you're invest you're actually investigating. <laughs> Sixteen. Oh, nice. Hey, so you're able to get in just fine. Is anyone else going with you? Um, it's gonna Bob, be a lookout, Bob, or yeah, if down. Bob. Either way, um, if he feels like the crew is pretty well, um engaged he may also jump down and try to help investigate otherwise he'll bump around on the deck and pretend to like keep the ship keep the ship moving while everyone else is being uh being drawn mm -hmm. okay does he get a sense that they're pretty well occupied they're pretty well occupied you, you've got, you're in a all right so i'll jump down but kind of stay closer to the door hey yeah give me a give me a dex or if you have another bonus let me know but yeah otherwise it's just dex all right dex will do it and that'll be six and that's enough because of the uh easy non-combat rolls from from darrow excellent all right okay so you guys you guys jump down and we're gonna just kind of put you guys over here in this side little corner the crates and the barrels um so as you guys go down, you can see that the first kind of layer of things is a lot of food. Again, like there's about double of everything. Like there's more food than you need. There's more supplies. There's more, more fuel, all that jazz. Um, but then can you guys give me a D8 exploration roll? So this is, uh, I'm just kind of building off of X rolls a little bit. So at any point, you can roll exploration. Expl uh, exploration. So instead of just like, "Hey, do I, I'm going to roll my whiz or whatever," I can use my, I can use a uh, exploration roll to get find stuff. So give me a D8 roll. Okay. With a two for Bob. Six plus one is seven. Okay. So for Bob, um, what you find is you kind of like find a crowbar and you you. Uh, you pop it open, which, by the way, you can you can grab that crowbar as a tool if you want. Uh, but essentially, you find a crowbar and you pop one open, and you find a crate or several crates of this dark brown bottle labeled chloroform. Jocelyn, oh, shoot! Jocelyn is <laughs> Definitely don't want to break those. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> let, let, let's pack this straw a little tighter and seal that up. <laughs> Hey. And then for you, Lou, as you're doing the same thing, you find crates um, open up, you, you lift away some straw, you find guns lined up in, in a few boxes, rifles and shotguns and a few, you know, mm. so they, they, they have their whole, ar a whole arsenal down there with them. Would we get the okay. impression that these look like um, kind of like military surplus kind of weapons? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there a um an inventory list 
in any of them or like a note to the recipient because this is a lot more guns than the crew of a ship would need that is am i understanding that that is um i ha i don't know about that one give me let's see um give me a d6 roll and let's uh and with your investigation i'll let you reroll it reroll it once okay so three, four five six is there is an inventory okay Okay, and so and... you find. Go ahead. You find you find a, a listing of it, and it does list out things like you have extra supplies, you have guns, you have chloroform, you have like netting, and you have you know um, some even some like small cases of of TNT, and you have it like written in on a note like just just in case from this kind of obvious um, like company like supplier but it's handwritten like just in case okay I carefully packed that away exactly as it was packed and um uh jot down all of that in my notebook that I then hide back under my camera in my bag nice okay excellent well while this is going on Robert what have you been doing Um, so they're gathering the crew to do a get. Um, have I caught on that they're trying to lure their, the crew away uh, for other reasons than that? Um, I think that's up to you. Have you, how have you guys been communicating? Do you, you want to know or what the other people um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, would we have made it obvious that we were enticing the, the cook away from the kitchen and everyone into one place? Like, hey, everybody's going to be on the bow in the sun. Look at this. I think that's up to you guys. Do you want to leave the, the, the cook here? Or are you like, it's yeah, totally up to you guys. What do you, how do you guys want to play it out? My intention was to, to have the whole crew occupied, at least just for a chunk of time, so that if... Yeah, the idea in my head was like Robert would have an easier time if he did need quiet to study. If that was the okay. task he wanted to do, he wouldn't have the banging of dishes behind him. Um, okay. So that sort of thing. given okay. given that, um, I'm going to be flipping through um, all documentation then on the island, uh, trying to suss out um, like what secrets there might be, what uh, what discoveries were made. Because uh, Robert's an academic type, uh, mm -hmm. his nose is typically firmly inside of a book, um, so he's going to be trying to glean as much information about the location as possible, uh, as well as any potential dangers that they might run into, flora, mm -hmm. fauna, um, any hazards that were noted on the map, um, or and he's going to also try to decipher the map and try to work it backwards uh, to undo some of the. Uh, intentional mistakes that he finds. Okay. Yeah, why don't you give me awesome. another... Uh, uh, sorry, go for it. I was just oh. saying that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So yeah, give me another uh, whiz or intelligence uh, roll. Make it easy. Um, okay, easy. Uh, let's see here. That is a total of seven mm -hmm. on intelligence, so that does me easy. Okay. All right, so I will, I will, because of the seven, uh, just barely getting over the target, I will ask this. Do you want to know about the island itself? Do you want to know some of the hazards? Or do you want to know a little bit about some of the treasure that you might be after? Um, well, I know I'm going to the tomb of Ator, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to, I want to look into the, the potential hazards. So I, so my exploration crew has the best is armed with the best knowledge they have they can get to defend themselves from whatever might be out there for sure so when it comes to hazards on on the island of purdue it's kind of a lost world there's stories and legends of like things from ancient pasts you know like some sailors say you you you've there's dinosaurs on the island some say there's giant apes some say there's there's insects that will you know eat a man's arm in a single bite others say that the natives uh that have existed in 
previous civilizations left traps everywhere in their in their temples um that overall you can get lost in the jungle so depending on where you're at you may you may run into a a whole sort of assortment of things specifically when it comes to otar's tomb you feel that since you are entering more of a uh, a royalties kind of tomb you feel that traps may be uh may be in your future specifically okay uh, i'm gonna go ahead and notate that down um is there, is there any well i already said i was looking at the hazard so um that is going to be my turn then perfect hey um we've got bob and lou who have gone ahead was bob was there anything else you wanted to do on your turn before we go over to darrow It might be he might be muted, but let's go over to Daryl and let's see what. Can you, uh, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you really? now. Okay, yeah, I was muted. I unmuted, um, and then I guess it didn't take. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm just uh, keeping an eye on that door. Uh, okay. Yeah, nothing more for me. All right, um, that's going to bring us to uh, to Daryl. Okay, so here's the here's the picture. <laughs> so yeah, Darrow is taking his time. He he gives this uh, this drawing of the crew, and um, you know, kind of slaps him on the back, and just kind of sees that the the <clears throat> with and time's passing a little quicker here. So I think would are Lou and Bob finished with investigating? Are they are they uh, leaving the cargo we... hold? Or are they still? Are we still down there? That's that's up to them. If they want to stay another round, they're welcome to, or they can leave. Should we use Bob's turn to sneak out again? <laughs> I don't think you need a roll to sneak out. I think you're good. Okay. You're... Yeah, I'd be inclined to um, cut and run at this point. Yeah, let's let's skedaddle. <laughs> yeah, while we're getting good. Um, burn our bridges here if we can help it. It, it. Essentially, we found evidence of uh, potential coup material and uh, kidnapping <laughs> material. So let's pretend uh, we're not down there. <laughs> Sounds good. So to I'm you. I'm rolling this just to see what see what I should do. All right. So um, so getting to know the crew a little bit better. Um, I think Darrow would be looking. Is there anybody? Is there anybody on the crew with any ailments, injuries, um, any, you know, thing, anything from their work that has injured them? And he would just be like, "Oh, hey, you know, I, I have what you need. Like, let me, let me tend to that." And he'd have his medic kit and be right back in the zone. And he's like, "That's what I'm here for. I, I, that's what I get paid for." And he kind of sits and thinks to himself, "Like, I am getting paid, right? Like." I don't know what I agreed on for this, but um, okay, you know, carry on, do the good work, as it were. And so, yeah, he's just gonna find anybody in the crew that that needs some assistance um, and and help them out with a bit of medical care. Perfect. Yeah, I think that would be uh, totally fine to uh, to do. Why don't you give me uh, a D four roll and how many sailors you're able to help? Um, okay. Three. Yeah. Three. Rope, awesome. between rope burns, a little bit of maybe uh, some seasickness, maybe some sunburn, you know, heat, heat exhaustion. You're able to help a couple of them. And so we'll say the same thing. You kind of endeared yourself as the medic with, um, similar to Bob with the crew. You, you've you kind of gained their trust. And they like they like having a medic on board. They don't usually get medical attention. It's not, they haven't happened to adopt a, a medic yet on the crew. Excellent. And then we have one more round left of easy non-combat rolls. Perfect. Okay. Well, time time's going to drop by as you guys kind of pull in. You guys are able to get away from that from the cargo hold. A few a few more days pass, and eventually you kind of are summoned up to the, the bridge to talk with Captain Reichman, um, just as a group. Okay. Um, prior to this, would there have been an opportunity for me to casually show my travel companions in 
my notes uh, about what we found in the cargo hold? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, a couple days have passed. You probably like shut the door on the thing. And then, yeah, a couple days or you're able to kind of get some quiet time with everybody, you know, have a, have a meal and discuss some of the things going on. And so before we go into Captain Reichman, as a group, is there anything that you want to discuss about what's going on or what you've discovered or how you want to approach perhaps a conversation with the captain that's about to occur? Well, Lou would um, not necessarily tip her hand, especially at sea with someone who she has a business relationship with, especially since we don't know the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? I think that's I think that's wise. I think um, my inclination would be to play it close to the to the chest. Um, don't tip our hand that we know anything. Um, just try to keep things cordial and keep our ears open. I've been deciphering the the map, and um, I haven't found any true troubles uh, along our path. Uh, so there are some reports of creatures that shouldn't exist in our era. Um, they, they're, the reports vary um, between explorers that have gone to this island. Um, but I believe our uh, target within the tomb um, is likely protected by traps. Uh, so be on the lookout when, we're, when we finally arrive to uh, look for these uh, potentially primitive traps that uh, be very dangerous to us. Okay. Respect the wildlife. Watch out for traps. Got it. I just think Darrow would be uh, this visibly disappointed in the crew that there's like guns in the in the hold and that they're relying on relying on such methodologies. Um, to, to solve the problems or perhaps up to no good like maybe they're smugglers and he's just like ah, i know that that's reality like humans are going to be humans but i just it just makes him it makes him sad to see that uh that these guys he's gotten to know and you know having uh, slapping them back having good time that they're potentially up to uh nefarious things it just kind of his countenance has darkened a little bit that's kind of all you get from well Darrow, would would the crew necessarily know everything that's in the crates? They don't always know what their supervisors are up to, do they? And do they have much choice? Wait, let me get no. this straight. You you all went below deck and explored the crates that you were told not to. Um, yeah, Darrow yeah, just I, I, looks over uh, looks over at, at Robert and just kind of like winks a little bit. He's like, "We're explorers, Robert. It's what we do." Uh, we didn't want, take anything. I, I, I don't want to know for plausible deniability. Uh, um, please okay. don't, don't so, tell me what you found because I, I need to have some form of plausible deniability in case we are reprimanded. I've been in the galley studying the maps. <laughs> he just kind of like shakes his head and kind of pinches the bridge of his nose. <sighs> Just sage whispers. Hey, Rob, Bob, Robert. don't tell him about taking the crowbar. <laughs> what crowbar? <Robert. laughs> for that, for that character, that character commitment, I'm probably going to give you a hero coin for that. <laughs> uh, yes. Jero just has like a, a flourish of his hands as he kind of like is next to Lou, and he and he points to Lou, and he's like, investigative reporter, Robert. <laughs> It's in her nature. Like, you can't be upset about this. <laughs> yes, but at the same time, depending on what you found, we are going to a, a potentially dangerous location. And the the fact that they might have additional firearms on hand, like, I don't have as many bullets for my revolver as I would like. If they have additional ammunition, I will surely put that to use if the case arises. But at the same time, we don't know what dangers are on this island, not in, not in its entirety. So there could be a situation where we need additional firearms. So what I'd like to do, Kane, is uh, I'd like to just roll a wisdom roll. I imagine Darrow's whiz bonus is, is a lot about his gut more than he knows. And just knowing that, you know, getting to know the crew, knowing the people, um, 
I just want to make that roll to kind of get a sense. Like, do these guys seem to have a sinister side? Do they whisper in dark corners, kind of thing, or do they seem do they seem oblivious? And that's kind of okay. kind of more or less what I'm going for. Sure. So that is a nineteen. Yeah. So you you do notice there's there's chatter, right? But your gut is informing you that they may be talking in dark corners and maybe like zipping their lips as you kind of walk by but you don't there's not a sinister vibe across it it's more of a kind of a schoolyard talk okay okay yeah so there there finds a little bit of comfort in that doesn't seem like these guys are are pirates under some sort of guise for at least that's what it's got to them excellent Okay. Well, if you guys are ready, Captain Reichman is waiting. My roll had it. Okay. So you you finally summoned um, to the the captain's court, the the bridge, the wheelhouse. You can see that it's kind of his office space. He's listening to some um, some recordings of some guitars as he as he's steering the ship. Um, you see, it's it's not as like tidy and clean as you'd think, but there's like pictures of trophies and memories. You see that he's often found with other adventurers, maybe a, even a few signatures, and and you see that there's like him in the, in Africa and the Sahara, and also you know the the Pride Lands there. You also see him like up in the north and the cold. Like he's you can tell just from the pictures and the the assortment of of curiosities in this wheelhouse that. Captain Reichman has been everywhere and has practically done everything. So he's he's a world a world traveler and he has seen a lot. Um, but with him, you also see a a, um, a young lady. Obviously, you know, not like a teenager or anything, but probably like mid to late late twenties. Uh, you can see as well just by kind of looking. There's a familiar kind of build, and so you you kind of assume that this is Captain Reichman's daughter. But as you enter in, he uh, calls you over uh, to, the sh- to the ship. He has the, a moment to kind of like stand with the wheel and things are going fine. He can look back and he's like, welcome. I hope, um, obviously this isn't the first time you've had a chance to talk with him, but he welcomes you into his, in his wheelhouse, gives you permission to come aboard. Um, just, uh, we're, we're getting close to uh, Purdue by our charts. Uh, and you can see that uh, Anne, Anne Reichman, that's uh, his daughter, uh, she has a, the map of like the sea charts, and she's been navigating the boat and recording and and all that stuff. She's she's done some well calculations, and we should be there, you know, in a matter of hours, if not maybe by by the morning. I just wanted to uh, to get on board with uh, with a lot of you, and since you have chartered the ship, what uh, what your overall plan is. For um, for approaching Purdue, this is uh, your first time, correct? And it happens to be yes. Yes. And uh, you're hoping that our exploration of the the tomb of Otar is uh, going to be a fruitful one. Yes. I've I've heard of. Uh... Otar. If I uh, if I remember correctly, the legend states that Otar was a king of the past age, and um, one of the treasures was his, his emerald eye. Is that that happens to be right? Based off what you guys, I, I know I haven't like as a GM, I haven't like told you a lot of this. But this is him kind of filling you in on what you're after specifically. Um, but Otar's eye is a giant emerald that he used to peer legends say into the souls of his followers to see who's lying and who's telling you. No one could resist uh, his his emerald stare. There are very few notes on the thing we're after. Um, just some vague notes about the tomb itself. And uh, it, it troubles me that there are no additional notes beyond um, the the scatterings that we have found, as well as the the fact that someone went through a lot of effort to alter and um, corrupt information. 
Yes, that, that sounds about right. You, you, if I if I remember, I heard the stories in the community. You you got that map from from James Carnahan, right? That's how yeah. you. Obtained it. Um, go for it. Sorry. No, no, you go for it. I was just going to ask, like, could you regale me with that? How did how did you come about it? And so, what I've hoped for this for this moment is for each of you to add just one detail. Don't worry about like what is. Just add one detail to your hijinks or your heist of that map from James Carnahan. That's all right. I'm curious what you guys can come up with, but. Lou, do you want to do you want to start off? And so, do you look, want me to go first or hang back? <laughs> whatever, whatever you guys want to do. I'm just curious. Well, I'm just gonna give you he left it on the desk with the window open. <laughs> he left it on the it desk just, with the window open. It just blew out the window. It was found. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your story? And are you sticking to it? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, Lou probably actually. Uh, Lou would play things a little closer to the chest. She she doesn't. Um, she doesn't cause mischief as much as I do. Uh, so she would just uh, nod to her companions to to regale the captain. Um, can she? Are we all gonna stick by the door, Kane? Or oh, move, move about move about the, the the wheelhouse wherever you'd like. So I yourself. think what Lou would do is try to stand here and be as unobtrusive as possible um, to see if she could get um, a glance at what the navigator's been working on or what the captain might be hiding downstairs. Uh-huh. Um, because if they're, if they're, at least the captain must know what's in the hold uh, uh-huh. and just want to be sure that he's not gonna sell us out or <laughs> leave us to drown somewhere for sure Damn. for me um as far as uh attaining the map um it was brought to me as uh, i am a field researcher um with the expertise of going into the field and finding lost civilizations deciphering their texts as best i can so for me, it was it was brought to me. I don't know how it was acquired, uh, but I am aware of the individual from which uh, you say that the map came from. Uh, James, you mean James. Yeah, Carnahan. He, James is uh, known in the community as a um, a. I don't even know the best term for it. Um, not an explorer per se, but. And not in the academic sense, but more of a um, explorative hawker. He mm. likes to find treasure and give it and sell it to the highest bidder. Whereas I believe treasures like that and cultural, of especially cultural significance, belongs in the museum. <laughs> if you didn't have a euro coin, you deserve one for that. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. It belongs in a museum. So do you. <laughs> so Bob kind of has his has his hands in his pockets. He's leaning up next to the next to the door during all of this. Um, what is our so uh, James James Carnahan mm-hmm. is kind of known in our world. What's the general um, sort of consensus on what type of person he is like is he the type of guy where you're like oh yeah y'all stole a map from james carnahan nice or is it like oh you stole a map from james carnahan like can we really trust you it's like what's the what's the overall impression that people have of carnahan um so for carnahan you you would know this in the sense that you know that he is good at what he does and like robert said he is not an, a, scol- a scholaristic explorer he is he is focused a lot on the mo- the monetary gains right. sells it to the highest bidder you also know that james is not necessarily the most morally square person like right he's not he's not like a criminal but he's also not a do-gooder 
Um, right. And so, like, it's more of the fact that you, I think as you're talking to Captain Reichman, the more, the idea of you stealing something from James Carnahan is like, I hope you know what you're doing. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's, that is very interesting. It's like, it's, um, it's like working with James Carnahan is kind of like a necessary evil at times. Right. So we're kind of, we're possibly putting ourselves in hot water by getting on his bad side. Yes. But not necessarily, um, we're not necessarily going to be blacklisted. No. Yeah. Like I think, I think alleviating a map from another explorer with James, like, eh, kind of like, yeah, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. As long as they can't prove it, we're all good. Yeah. All right, so Bob kind of has his hands in his pockets, and he's leaning up against the door frame. Um, he kind of looks over at the captain underneath the brim of his cap, and um, he backs up D's story a little bit, or, uh, or Lou's story. He's like, oh, it's almost like the map just fell into our hands. Um, <laughs> I don't... I don't worry too much about this stuff. I'm just here to I'm just here to lift boxes and um, open doors. Um, I'm the, you know, I'm I'm also more worried about the monetary gain side of things. Um, I'll leave the leave the questions about the ethics of what we're doing to our our explorer and our doctor here. It's like I'm they they hire me to move move crates. I move crates for him. I don't worry about it too much. So he's trying to kind of... What he's trying to do is... Um, like... Sort of solidify his persona as just the laborer who's here to like just help everybody do what needs to be done. Um, but he's like he's keeping an eye open during yeah. like while he's talking. Perfect. All right, and Darrow, how do you kind of tie tie this tail off? Yeah, so he kind of looks around at what everybody's saying, and he's kind of like has like one eyebrow raised as everybody's kind of like coy about it, and then he looks at the captain. And he says, "Well, captain, I'll shoot you straight. James Carnahan is a bastard." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you, and I, I served in a few expeditions with him as a as a hired hand. And uh, you see this peach fuzz on my face? He wouldn't even... It, it, it's all he knew. You know, he's kind of got this light beard. And he's like, mm -hmm. turns out, James Carnahan is such a selfish man that if you were to, I don't know, shave some facial hair, stand right in front of him, pretend to be a newsboy, and add some papers to your pile, you know, like wink, wink, mm -hmm. then uh, wouldn't even know the difference. So uh, the map is better off in better hands. So <laughs> is. His story, in a vague way, is that he he lifted this thing by not even barely attempting disguise, and James mm -hmm. Carnahan was so pig-headed that he didn't even recognize somebody he hired for several expeditions. <laughs> Very nice. So our morally upright explorer did not question where the map came from, and our morally upright medic, who also is endeared to the crew, just shaved and picked it up. <laughs> Yep. Nice. <laughs> awesome. I think that I think I like playing Darrow as like he's a good dude and uh but yeah, he's he's wily. He sees some stuff. So He's not he's not he's a, lawful good. He surprises. <laughs> he surprises once yeah. in a while and if somebody if somebody shows they're undeserving, he'll uh he'll let them be undeserving. <laughs> like Excellent. like that bastard James Carnahan. Awesome. And Bob's well, like, uh, like we said, fell into our hands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not going to question. I'm not going to question the origins of the the map. Just <laughs> the fact that whoever whoever drew it, James or uh, whoever was with him, um, did a went through an awful lot of trouble to falsify information on the map. So we could be walking into an absolute disaster. Mm. Oh, Captain, hey. how ready are you for a getaway if we need to get away quick? 
Oh, the Anglehorn can can handle quite a bit. We can we've made quite a few getaways in my in my day, um, some better than others. But two things: uh, one for that delightful tale, uh, uh, Lou and Bob. Uh, you guys don't have a hero coin yet, so definitely take one. Cool. All right. Um, you, uh, Darrow and, and Robert, you also would have earned one, but you already have one. Just so you know, mm -hmm. the crew earned one. The other thing is, is just as you guys are finishing up this tale, I want each one of you to roll a charisma roll to see you. You, we're not questioning the story; it's just a question of how the uh, the captain reacts to it overall. Um, for Bob and for Darrow, because of your endearment to the crew, it's an easy roll. For Lou and Robert, it's just normal. Whew, good thing that's easy. <laughs> well, yeah. Twelve for me. Dirty nineteen. It's a seven for Bob. It's All right. a pass for me. So everyone after everyone passed? Yep. Perfect. Well, as as you guys finish your tail and, and Daryl shoots straight, the the captain uh Reichman, he like takes off his glasses and is like, you know what? Like I appreciate your candor and I'm I'm gonna shoot straight with you guys. You know? There's I deal with a lot of people, some better than others. I've dealt with, with Folks like James Carnahan, my whole career, I've dealt folks with you like you, my whole career. Like, you never can quite tell the, the there's you know where everyone's going to line up <clears throat> when things really matter. But I, I can I get a, fe a feeling that you guys will. That a lot of you are straight shooters and people I can trust. And I'll let you in on a on a bit of a secret. So, <clears throat> you know I'm connected. I have, I get I hear wind of things all around the world. I knew about this little job you hold, and not necessarily it was a huge job, obviously, with James. You just walk up and take it, like, eh. But <laughs> his reaction sent waves. I don't know if you guys have, you know, he probably scampered off and came in contact with me, but it wasn't long before he uh, kind of tracked down, tracked down that I was heading out to Purdue. And so he's kind of put two and two together that whoever stole the map probably on my boat and <clears throat> James has been here before he's not on my ship but he's been to Purdue he knows where it's at so I just want to let you know that just in case he may be showing up he may he may be hot on our trails we've been keeping an eye out on our on our stern for for days for weeks now I haven't seen him quite yet but you never know could be already he could already be there for all we know well so we may have gives company. him a professional nod that does not bode well uh, given the potential dangers and misleading that the map has uh, have us going on I will do my best to unravel the not just intentional, but the um, unintentional, misleading facts about the map as quickly as I can. Sounds good. Okay. Any other commentary on that? Um, Lou would keep quiet. Um, does she see anything else of interest um, from the navigator or the captain's quarters? Which I have um, somewhere below. Mostly, yeah, not not... Not entirely, not without some deeper investigation, but you can you can tell that you know Anne is, even though she's charting, like she, you can tell that she is like, her ears are perked and she's like, incredibly interested. You can almost sense that, like, ooh, the intrigue, the the event, like this is just getting good, to her. Yeah, I would assume that she's in the know at least as much as the first mate, uh, if not more so. Yeah. Okay. Bob Thanks. Bob would also take note of the captain's use of just in case and kind of like shoot a, a glance at Lou and like that was the note that we saw just in case. Um, so that makes Bob think that maybe the crew is not up to nefarious purposes so much as they are ready to defend themselves if James starts to cause problems for us. Yep. Okay. 
Well, um, after uh, a minute or two, um, you get like you're talking, and then all of a sudden you hear this sharp whistle blow, and you hear uh, Jack out front calling out, "Land, land! We see land!" And so you guys rush out to the front um, of the ship, and you can see, like out on the dock, the the deck, you can see that um, you can see Purdue, the island of Purdue, and it, it's you know, a, it's not a huge, huge island, but you can see that it's it's expansive. It's there's tall mountains off in the center. Um, it's quite beautiful. There's fog drifting here and there. Um, picturesque, especially in the morning, um, in the morning light. Um, but yeah, so you guys made it to Purdue. Awesome. And, and we we were not uh, smashed to bits on the shoals there. <laughs> no, no. Captain Captain uh, Captain Reichman is, is quite um, quite uh, deft with. Um, with the the uh, the ship, he pulls it into the bay, and is able to kind of steer it and weigh anchor. And then eventually, you guys um, are able to take long boats with the sailors. Jack and and even Anne comes with you um, on board. And over the next few hours, you're able to set up camp just out in the forest on the beach, maybe a little bit ways in. Nothing nothing too deep. Um, but you're able to set up camp at the at the end of the day and sit down together um, in your own tent, lined up with the nice. supplies to plan out your uh, your venture for uh, for Otar's tomb. So Jack and Jack and Anne are with you, so they can report back to the captain. So what we're going to do for the next just round or so is um, discuss how you guys want. To, to what uh, any kind of information you may want to know about Otar's tomb, your general approach, or whatever, um, anything you want to do in preparation, you'll have a round to do so, and then we'll move on to the morning where you get to trek over to the tomb and go from um, there. If it's all right, I'd like I have an idea where I'd like to go first. Sure, uh, sure. Something to do with the map might yield a bit more information. So, um. Darrow comes comes up to Robert and says, Hey, Robert, I I don't know much about maps, I must admit, but I do know a bit about ink. Uh, you know, and he kind of has a sketchbook and pens, and he's like, I I have a I have a theory, and I just, let's just see if it works. There's there's a different sheen that you get from different ink as it ages uh, up against this light, and I just I just want to see it and, and just take a look. And so. He starts like he's like it's, it just occurred to me, and I think these lanterns are gonna be gonna be perfect for this test. So he's a uh, he holds up the the map to like the the lantern and kind of holding it at an angle where the, the lantern light's gonna be bouncing off. And I just want to roll uh yeah roll the uh, wisdom to kind of just um, see if we can yeah spot a difference in the ink and where there may have been alterations. So okay. See if we can get a little bit more info. Uh, I'm gonna use my hero coin for that. He's just like ah, frustrated, you know. His eyes um, kind of blinks I'm the sleep be, out of his eyes. I, I'll point out the differences I've already noticed as well. Okay, we'll make it easy, and, but you can reroll. Okay, so we kind of keep picking away at it, keep searching. He kind of like moves his fingers across the ink to see if there's like a difference in texture. And there we go. That's pass. Okay. Um, so as you guys do, you're able to kind of slowly get through that. A little heat, a little light, a little little angle can eventually get through, but you had to work at it. And eventually you notice that what appeared to be more of a kind of like a path. Um, sorry, just a second. I had to sneeze. Nope, maybe. Anyways. Um, as you guys are working through it, hmm, easy. You find that the, it, the the notation of the jungle itself made it look as if there was kind of like this path that allowed you to kind of skirt through it. Um, but you 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 see that that kind of was cleared away, 
and you get the impression that the path around it may have kind of like they may have erased some warnings uh notation on the map like they tried to like scrape mm. off some of the stuff um and cover it up with some other ink so if you know you go try to skirt th- away from around the jungle that you may you may run into something meaning going around instead of through yes well that's that ruins the idea i was thinking that we would not take the path that was laid out on the map because that is likely where they're going to be expecting us to go Mm -hmm. if they're already here what time of day is it um it's probably late later in the night like the sun is set it's kind of dark so you you worked all day to get camp set up and now you you've settled down for the night to sleep before heading out in the morning you know the thing about light pollution that we are just now discovering, um, or well, it's been a, an idea for a while, is that light travels a very long distance, and even those in the forest can have light reflecting up into trees from distant camps. If we wanted to know if we were alone on this island or not, one would only need to climb up a tree to see if there's other campfires. <laughs> I look at Bob because I don't know who has better decks, but my my eyes light up like, ooh, look for something. <laughs> so anybody else uh, latching on to that idea? Um, Bob would let Lou take it. Um, he's he's <laughs> he's got a plus one decks, but um, it's not like he's he's not quite as limber as he was in his youth. <laughs> Well, the other advantage would be any any sufficient uh, area of height advantage, uh, mountaintop, hills, uh, or even being a distance away um, on the on the boat, they might be able to see or spot other lights within the canopies. Yeah, whatever you like to try, you can totally do that. Does anyone have better than a plus one dex or a plus zero strength for climbing? Bob has plus two strength, and he's definitely he's definitely game to see if he can get out there and, and climb up a tree if, if that's what's called for. <laughs> okay. Other ideas? Alrighty. You want some backup, Bob? I don't think any of us should be alone in the dark in the jungle. <laughs> Take, uh, right. take some of the ropes and pulleys that we have brought with us to be able to enter the tomb and uh, rig up a, a lift or safety line. I don't want any of you Absolutely. getting a broken leg before we set out. All right. So Bob's heading out towards the trees. He's just like, so climb up the tree and look in the other trees for light. Yes. The, oh, bottoms of yeah. the, the bottom side of the leaves will show light if uh, there is other campfires out in the distance okay all right Kane, so can i up. loan him my binoculars of course sounds awesome okay so that should give you a plus one well it, it's a plus one to navigation how do you want them used i think it can also make it eat make it easy for uh okay. so okay so what we're gonna do so you're taking some rope to help with the climbing and you're taking the binoculars to help with the looking correct yep Okay, so what I need is I need an easy strength and an easy whiz. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. So as everybody else is talking, Bob has been sitting in the sitting in the corner um, with his own lantern, um, kind of reading this book that he keeps in his pocket. He kind of shrugs, puts the book away, and says, "All right, let's go. Let's go deal. Let's go deal with this." So here comes a strength roll for climbing. That is a six. Just made it. Uh, uh, I think we're at target ten now. Yes. I'm going to spend uh, my hero easy. point. I'm, I'm going to spend my hero oh, coin. Add uh, ultimate yeah. to that. So we're not. So hero coins don't add ultimate in this setting. Oh, okay. They can do a reroll, but you do always have three. We have forgotten that you guys do have luck. Um, oh, that's right. We're starting out with. 
um, for luck. We haven't needed it up to this point, but everyone has four right. luck. We're gonna we're trying it like grit, but we also might have uh, yeah, we might speak a little bit, but um, yeah. Do y'all want to burn a luck die? I would say yeah. Uh, yeah. Use for it. All right, here we go. Try it again, yeah. or no, we just add. Yep, you just add yep. a d10, and then you plus your. If you have any luck bonuses, you add that to it. So you got a six right now. So you just Only need to add a seven. Add a d10, and then add your luck bonus. All right. Well, we just needed the one to get up into the tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go ahead, go ahead and roll it just to see how lucky you are. Very lucky. Very lucky. <sighs> More lucky nice. than climby. <laughs> yeah, you probably like. All right. you, you kind of made it up there. The ropes were there. You probably like uh, your branch broke, but the rope was like loose, looped around you in just a way that it like you fell. You ah, and, and then just like immediately like swung back over to a branch. And you're like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, All right, he's a little bit more comfortable uh, climbing uh, the mast of a ship than climbing a tree out in the wild. But here comes that wisdom roll. He's gonna check the leaves around him, see if he they look suspicious. Okay. <sighs> nope, that is four. <laughs> um, so I will yeah, my, re -roll I'll spend my hero coin for your reroll. All right, he kind of looks. He looks at the leaves. He looks down. He's like, I don't know. I don't. It's it's hard to tell anything up here. There we go. There 19. we go. Hey, as you kind of look around, you you take one look. You do happen to see lights off in the jungle, maybe a mile or two off. Okay, so it, I think he's not—he's not quite perceptive enough to be able to tell if the if the leaves are reflecting light. Um, he doesn't quite understand what was being asked of him there, but with the binoculars, he'd see that camp off on the distance. Mm -hmm. And he'd kind of like whisper down to Lou and say, "Hey, Lou, we've got company." She grins with two thumbs up, like <laughs> even though that's not what we want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll uh, clamber down the tree and try not to hurt myself, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we'll head back into the tent to let everybody else know what's happening. Okay. Well, when you guys, when you come back and you know Jack, for example, hears that there's another camp, it's like I knew, it. I knew they'd be here. It, I it, had it, my questions. What's that? I had my suspicions that uh, Tarnan would be on the island ahead of us, knowing that he had been here before, and well, now that I know the origins of how you acquired said map. I'm not unsurprised. Well, this, we'll deal with it as it comes up. This could be a problem. I am not a fighter, you see. I am very much an academic explorer. And um, Bob kind of shrugs and he says, well, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right. I will rely on your strength then. All right, so it's getting late. I'm just going to run through. Um, just Lou, what are you going to what are you going to do? I guess we've already done a lot of any other final notes before bed. I think. Nope. I'm going to make sure my gear and notes are in order, and just be watching my companions for what they want to do next. Okay. Darrow, any commentary? Uh, Darrow is very. Uh, unnerved he was when his military his military uh career he was stationed in the jungle and it just uh he, he doesn't he doesn't care for it and it it uh it has him unnerved a little bit mm -hmm. so you just he's a bit more quiet a bit more chipper than normal as you kind of get ready to go into the jungle and he just bad bad memories bad times spent there so that's all from darrow okay all right. Well, 
as things settle down, you guys go to bed. Jack and Anne, uh, you can see that Jack is kind of like, rah, 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 you know, grumpy. He's like off trotting to go tell the captain, make it back to the ship to tell him that it appears that another group is on the island, most likely Carnahan. You can also see that Anne is kind of excited about that. She almost like, as she's leaving, she's like, she kind of like whispers over to Lou, like, hey, do you think I could come with you all tomorrow to the tomb? Oh, my dad, you know, the captain has never really let me come on any of his voyages, or if you have, I have, I've never really left the boat. But do you think it could? Um, what training do you have? Your your nav charts are amazing, and I may need you ready on ship to get out of here in a hurry. Well, um, I am. Uh, so she is, she has an artistic background. You can see that she also has like a, a, a an art pad with her. She's a navigator. Um, and, and I saw her um, canvas on the deck behind uh, behind the command center. I saw her easel. Yes. Yeah, and so... And it, does Anne spell her name with or without an E? Without an E. Okay. Uh, does anybody else hear her say this? I'm, like, looking at my yeah. companions, because I don't know... I, I um, think getting the captain's daughter killed could go poorly for us, but I also don't want her to, like, run to our competition. <laughs> So um, Bob was kind of seemed like he's asleep in the corner with his hat over his face. And he kind of sits up, pushes his hat back and just like gives Anne a nice like a nice cold stare. And he says, absolutely not. We do not need someone who is untrained, um, just out for uh, thinking this is some kind of a romp. There is, there's no way that we can take responsibility for for your life, especially not since you're the captain's daughter. That's absolutely not. And then um, he winks, and he uh, lays back down. <laughs> Wink. She, she uh, kind of, like, winks back afterwards, like, ah, yeah. wink. I observe what's going on. Like, if you're going to go with us, regardless of what we tell you, know that it's going to be dangerous. Know that uh, we can't guarantee your safety and read this. And I pass over uh, a journal, uh, like a field guide of basic exploration. Oh, nice. Well, thank you. This is, and she like flips through it. And you can see that she's excited about it. Again, like this isn't, she has like a slight childish look to her. She's older, but she she's kind of giddy about it. Like, She's heard stories of her dad doing all this stuff for her whole life. And so kind of getting her out on, on things, kind of like living a, a childhood daydream. You can kind of get that picture. And, and Lou is going to be ticked with the captain for not teaching his daughter about this stuff. Because <laughs> she's going to do well, it anyway. Uh, I mean, given the time frame, it's not, uh, not unheard of. Yeah. But basically, what I handed her was the, uh, the the 1930s edition of the the Boy Scout Handbook. And it has all the knots, the ropes, the exploration, the what plants to stay away from, so on and so Ooh. forth. Nice. It's a good book. It is a good book. Hey. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll I guess we'll we'll see you in the we'll see you in the morning, and then head off. Just hey. because she's giddy doesn't mean she's incompetent. It just means she's excited. Mm -hmm. hey. but, a person, but a person who doesn't know the first thing about exploration and wilderness survival is a liability. Yep. So, um, is Robert's title professor or does he have a title? Um,. I'm going to say he's working towards his doctorate okay. in uh, archaeology. Um, 
So I'll just call him prof Professor because he's an academic. Uh, so, Professor, um, is your intention to take the emerald to a museum? Uh, I would like to if it actually exists, if it's not already gone. Uh, my my true goal, though, is I I love to explore cultures and civilizations, especially the ones long long gone. So I would like to do a more thorough study of the ruins themselves or the tomb itself to get an idea of what the people were like in, in their prime <clears throat> so that we can have a more complete history um, in, in your reading have you come across any um, mention of what indigenous people may still be in the area and if they lay claim to it well, I have not come across any information about indigenous peoples, but uh, indigenous fauna. Uh, there are reports, though wildly acclaimed, that there might be prehistoric creatures, um, what we refer to as dinosaurs, on this island. Ooh, alligators and hippopotamus and stuff. Cool. <laughs> Yes. Although I don't know if we'll run into a hippopotamus here. Yeah, I'm not sure that they would have made it this far out of Africa. Let's hope not. I would, yeah, I would surely hope not. <laughs> Unless someone brought it in as part of their menagerie. Perhaps. That's a mean thing to do to the animals. Well, I mean, it was not uncommon that... Uh, Ancient kings of the past would have menageries built uh, specifically so that they could have exotic animals brought from very long distances, uh, not necessarily as just pets, but as uh, things of intrigue. So as as the night wears on, Daryl and Bob, like you go to sleep to this conversation back and forth. The the sound the soothing voice of the professor is better than a glass of cold, uh, warm milk when it comes to like falling asleep, especially in the jungle. And eventually, Lou and the professor are able to get some sleep as well. And in the morning, you guys wake up and begin your trek uh, through the forest. Let me pull in. Um, Now this is how navigation rolls are going to kind of work. So Anne does, you're not quite sure how she got permission, but she is able to come along. Um, and so all we're going to do is just for navigation, moving from one area to another, sort of like a hex roll and hard suit. Um, we're just going to have someone roll a, nav uh, a navigation roll. It's a, it's a D8 essentially, and you just get to add any bonuses to it. So for example, if you have a navigation school thing or something that helps with navigation, you plus one. And counts as that, so she gives you a plus one to your D8 roll. And then I think a few others have some bonuses there. So um, just tally up your bonuses, and then somebody just needs to give me a D8 roll and tell me the total. Uh, yep, um, I have a one. plus one. Sorry, go ahead. So if you've got a plus one. I also add a plus one. Okay. And then Anne has a plus one. So if there's a three, that means we have a plus three. So someone just needs to give me a D8 and then add three to the result. Given my current luck with dice lately, I don't think it should be me. Um, am I still going first? Uh, we can we can rearrange initiative, but this is just a one off to like inform as we enter the new area, navigating okay. from the camp to the uh, to the tomb. Alrighty, I will go ahead and roll an eight unless somebody else lays claim now. Go for it. Six plus three. Hey. So as as you get to the point, you've, you've gone off the charts, essentially. But as you are approaching, you get more and more kind of signs of ancient civilization. You you trek through the jungle, and as you kind of come across these, these waterfalls, you actually see that there's a mural of Otar's civilization back, and you can see that he's he was a grand figure and um, things of that nature. Additionally, there's two other things that you find. 
you find a small cache of ancient coins. So someone can take some treasure, um, old coins, and stow them away. As well as you find an old golden crown. Still shiny, but obviously handmade. Nothing refined. Hand smelted. Okay. Um... Bob will carry the coins. So I'll just mark that down as treasure. Yep. To be divvied up when we are done with the adventure. Um, is the crown noteworthy enough to necessarily belong in a museum or um, of artistic value, such artistic value that um, it would be part of a good collection? Potentially, yeah. You may find you may find more things similar as you get approach as you get closer and closer. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and notate the crown and add it to my pack. Okay. I will is say this. this is, oh, sorry. Go for it. Um, I would like to take a fo- few photographs of the mural, um, and if need be, under the canopy, if we need more light, um, use torches. But I think, I think with the the water and the sunlight, there's probably enough to get good pictures. For sure. So what I'll say this is you can take a picture and then that mural, if you spend a heart worth of effort studying it, especially if you have some archaeological or um, kind of historical background, anybody has those kind of tags, you may get some extra information from it. Um, After a heart of effort, the gold and the treasure, one thing to keep in mind is in this setting, you have 10 slots of equipment. Yes. But if you if you stock up on treasure that's that's using up lots of gear that you may may, may need. Yeah. We we can always like hang it on a tree and if the monkey still steal it come back for it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. So um do we hang around in this area to examine the mural or do we work away at that heart of effort later? That's up um, to you. Do you spend it how it is? Eventually you guys do trek and find yourself at the gates of Otar's tomb. I I actually would like to try to decipher the um the mural and, and for this one reason. There could be some information or secrets gleaned from this about the hazards we might be facing. Mm-hmm. So I would, like to spend, I would like to spend a little bit of time uh, deciphering the, the mural, um, not just from an academic standpoint, but also as um, many, many cultures like to leave behind messages um, of warning and danger um, in the form of... of uh, drawings on walls and such. Uh, so this might give us a bit of information about what we might face. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's do this. Everybody for this, um, for this, let's everyone gets uh, an action that they want to do as they come up to Otar's tomb. So let's start with, um, let's start with Robert. Um, so I, I'll, uh, studied the um the mural i have archaeology and linguistics um tags so um i would like to try to glean as much information from it for however long we stay there to study it okay Uh, so let's see archaeology and linguistics um that should be able to give you let's uh let's i'll let you roll tools effort tool effort Yep, tool effort. Um, okay. No, oh, hey. Max, six. Okay, so you've done six points of, of effort towards that. All right, that's your action. Lou, what do you want to do? Okay. Um, so, I can either, like, can I use my kind of survivor awareness to interpret this art or uh, whatnot? So that would um, give me a, a plus two to wisdom. 
Does that make sure. sense? Yeah, that's fine. Go okay. for it. Eight. Okay. Um, and then can I re-roll with my yes. hero coin? Yes, you can re-roll or you can spend spend some luck. Okay, there we go. Dirty so 20. Helping, so you're helping Robert um, work through it? Oh, um, I forgot. I had a ling linguistics gives me ultimate effort when deciphering and interpreting. Oh, perfect. Yeah, get, instead of that six, uh, roll that d12. It's probably going to be worse. No, oh, no, it's better. How about that? Yes. Okay. Get it. Okay. You got it. So <laughs> you decipher it. Tag. So you decipher the, the mural talking about the uh, Otar, and you find kind of, after some some challenge, you find that it, it's describing a little bit of the eye, and it's almost like a quote from Otar, where it is um, the eye... I say. The eye is not the answer, but it is the key. But be warned, it is a curse also. Oh. He who disturbs this bracelet shall drink from the Nile. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, Bob and Dara, what do you want to do? Uh, Bob wants to look out at the forest and um, see if he sees any signs of human movement or a potential ambush. Okay. All right. Uh, give me a, uh, a wisdom roll. That'll be a 10 exactly. Hey. Okay. Um, no, you don't see any, any movement coming in, but you are concerned... Uh, that going in into the temple itself will kind of cut you off from view. Okay. So it, it doesn't provide a lot of it. Once you go in, you're not a lot, you know, you don't, you can't really see right. what's coming. That makes right, sense. Then. Perfect. And Darrow. Hmm. I think Darrow is still just unnerved in the jungle and kind of seeing everybody you know, pick their way of progress. He's he's looking forward to, to getting out and kind of getting some fresh air. The, the trees feel a bit claustrophobic. And you see him, he's kind of look around that, like, kind of over-the-top gulp, you know, that people go, go, like, oh, man, things are not well here. <laughs> and so he's going to kind of volunteer to, to move a little bit ahead. And... Um, he kind of scoots his way like out and around and he sees the temple and he's going to take maybe that time of, I want to use the kind of one time per session, like move in action on a GM turn okay. and, and use like the bonus to awareness to be like, he wants to thoroughly look around the temple to see um, if there's anything else to discover. Or can he do like a lap around it? You know, to kind of like see everything. Can he see other places? Like, does he happen upon anyone waiting in ambush? Kind of the same idea of what Bob is looking for, but just trying to get a really thorough look at things. Okay. Um, so just want to, he, he runs ahead and tries to check everything out, kind of moving along the tree line where he's not just like out in the open for anybody to see. So sure. here's the wisdom roll. And that is plus four on this roll. So that is an nice. 11. Okay. So, from, from your investigations, you can see that the temple kind of leads in, and it's kind of been half buried, like it's not a full structure. It's a it's a temple and it's a tomb, so it's kind of like starting to go into the into the ground. There may be some cracks or things, um, but you do see that there is like a courtyard, and this is where we're going to leave off. With you have this vision of kind of climbing up and working through. You see this large courtyard with more statues. The vines are growing everywhere. This pool in the in the middle, these roots, um, and you can see that it can it goes a little bit deeper, and perhaps that's where like deeper into here is where the tomb is. Um, but you've got this this space, um, and you have this murky water, and I think that site of kind of 
panning over the temple view of actually like getting to see inside of it is where we're going to call it for today. Ooh. Okay. And we will start next time with the site of the temple um, as your uh, starting scene. You get to walk away with uh, the temple in view. You can almost sense the treasure. <laughs> so, so as as Darrow trots off, I would say, beware traps, poisons, and whatever this curse might be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Excellent. Well done, everyone. Well, well that was done. fun.